I'm Richard Jacobs from MyDUIAttorney.org, and I'm here with Lawrence Taylor, the number one DUI attorney in the entire United States. A lot of people call him the Dean of DUI. Uh, he's been involved with DUI for over 29 years exclusively at his law firm based out of California, and I'm very pleased and very proud to have the opportunity to interview him today. Welcome Thank you, Richard. Taylor. Thank you very much. Okay, well, we'll get right to it with the first question. Uh, Mr. Taylor, from your blog posts, one might get the impression that you're anti-law enforcement um, and against drunk driving. What's your overall stance on DUI? Is it wrong? Is it not as bad as everyone makes it out to be? No, I mean, drunk driving, and we're talking about two different things, I understand. DUI and driving over 0.08, and they're not the same thing. Uh, drunk driving is dangerous. It kills people. Uh, I, I, I have a son. I have a wife. Uh, I don't want some drunk driver injuring or killing them. We need laws prohibiting drunk driving and punishing it severely. We always have. Uh, when I started practicing, there was a very good law. It just basically said, thou shalt not drive uh, under the influence of alcohol. Okay? To the degree that it's going to impair your driving and be, render you dangerous. Uh, that's not the law anymore. Now the focus is upon blood alcohol content. Mothers Against Drunk Driving have been very effective in changing the laws, or adding a law, I should say, okay. so that the prosecution has two ways to try to convict the defendant, one of which is not being under the influence. They don't care if you're under the influence or not. They don't care if you're in yeah. danger or not. All they care about is the blood alcohol content, and your individual tolerance to the alcohol, assuming the level is accurate, is okay. irrelevant. So now someone, when they're when they're faced with a DI, whether they're actually faced with two criminal cases is what you're saying. Yes, un unless there is a case where the defendant or the suspect refuses to take a blood or breath test, in which case there is no blood or breath test, and they can't charge with the point of weight, they can only charge with DUI. Otherwise, they're always going to charge both offenses. It not only gives the prosecutor two ways to convict, and they, you can be convicted of both, by the way. Really? Yes. Uh, but it also gives him a very unique tactical advantage, and that is when you go to jury trial, jurors often can't make up their mind. Now that's supposed to be reasonable doubt when you get acquitted. Right. What happens is they have a compromise because not everybody agrees, they can't get a uniform verdict, so they decide to quit the client on one and convict them on the other. It's a compromise, but they don't realize it's no compromise. Uh, the person is convicted and is going to get punished the same as if there had been two convictions. Oh, okay. okay. Another question I have is, um, you recently made a blog post that tied in your 2005 predictions on the future of DUI, and a lot of them have largely come to pass, it seems. Uh, has DUI simply become a convenient cash cow for cities and states so they can earn more money under the guise of, of public safety? Well, there has been that. Uh, there is no question that uh, <coughs> In many municipalities, DUI is a source of considerable municipal revenue, um, and MED has been uh, very influential and effective in their political pressures on local municipalities as well as some members of the bench, the judges and prosecutors and so on. Um, a classic example of this is roadblocks, DUI roadblocks. Mm -hmm. Those were permitted in a five to four vote by the U.S. Supreme Court, but only for DUI. Uh, it could not be used for anything else. Now these roadblocks uh, have been set up and they've, they've found that they're not terribly effective, not nearly as effective as roving patrols. Okay. But in fact they've been expanded and the reason is not difficult to figure out. If you look at some of these roadblocks, there may be a thousand people stopped and of those 1,000, they may make one or two DUI arrests, oh, wow. but they'll make 70, 80, 100 citations for registration out of date, driver's license not current, tinted windows, uh, registration uh, on the license plate, uh, defective taillight, anything. And of those, maybe a third of them might get impounded with further fees and monies going to the local government. So, of course, they like that. And they call it a DUI roadblock because that's the only legal way they can stop people. I see. And in that circumstance, it's hard to say that they're doing it to stop drunk drivers. It's, it's more obvious that it's to, to raise revenue for all those methods. Well, you can see that in terms of the efficacy of finding DUIs and taking them off the highway, it's not very effective. 
There have been all kinds of studies showing that simple roving patrols, officers, patrol officers in cars or motorcycles, are far more effective uh, than putting the money into roadblocks. Thank you.